Does hyperbaric oxygen improve or affect cognitive performance? And do you need higher pressure in order to get that result? We did a research project looking at lower pressure versus higher pressure hyperbarics, and we assessed its effect on a variety of different cognitive performance markers. That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. Welcome to the third video in a series describing what my results were on the hyperbaric research that I finished as part of my PhD program at the University of Miami. If you missed the first two, please take a look at them. Certainly take a look at the first one where I go over the overview of what the research questions were, how we designed it, what the methods were, what we were testing, what time periods we tested, and an overview of the results. In this video, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on what the subjects of this research project reported as far as quality of life, as well as what our results were on the computerized cognitive assessment that we used as part of the data collection process in this research project. So with this project, we were attempting to answer the initial question of what is the effect of mild hyperbaric oxygen, 1.3 atmospheres versus 2.0 atmospheres. It's a question I get literally every day. The computerized cognitive assessment was used very specifically to assess memory, cognitive performance, spatial orientation, motor skills, executive function, and then together all of these lumped into a total cognitive score. Now, one of the downfalls of utilizing this particular test that we used for our research is historically it has been used to measure mild to moderate cognitive decline, and our subject base was really asymptomatic, non-diagnosed individuals. So what we did find were improvements in processing speed, improvements in executive function, improvements in spatial orientation, improvement in motor skills, an improvement in memory. And we found those both in the lower pressure group and in the higher pressure group. In the higher pressure group, we did see accelerated executive function, motor skills, and information processing as compared to the mild group. But if you look at the block plots, you'll see that they're all trending in the right direction. There was movement and improvement in a lot of these different areas. However, the only statistically significant finding was in memory. So memory was significant in both the mild group as well as in the high pressure group. Okay, we're going to get right back to that information in a minute. I just wanted to pause and share a new resource that we just finished developing. If you're in practice or about to be in practice or you've been in practice, but you're trying to tighten things up and really dial in your hyperbaric practice, we put together a free ebook guide. It gives you some jumpstart tips as well as some checklists to go through to make sure that you have your policies, procedures all rolling in the right direction so that you can have a successful practice. If you're interested in that, click on the link in the description below and we'll make sure we send you to the page where you can learn more and get your free copy of our ebook. If I were to do this again, or if I were to make recommendations for somebody looking for cognitive improvement in an otherwise healthy population, I would have chose a different test that might be a little bit more sensitive so that the findings that were trending in the right direction would likely be much more statistically significant. In addition to these cognitive assessments, we also had quality of life questionnaires. And across the board, we saw statistically significant improvements in sleep, improvements in energy, reduction in overall fatigue, and an increased assessment in their overall health and vitality. Similar to the computerized cognitive assessment, while both the mild group and the higher pressure group improved, the higher pressure group did seem to have a greater percentage of change. And just remember, this study was limited to just a period of 50 hours over the course of about three months. As any good study attempts to answer certain questions through the results of the study, it also often leads to additional questions. And one of the questions that came to my mind as we went through this process was whether it was the higher pressure or the lower pressure, but in many cases, the lower pressure over even a longer period of time, would we continue to see improvements or be able to maintain some of the improvements that we saw by utilizing the variable of frequency and duration as opposed to just pressure and percentage of oxygen alone? Hopefully, as the research in the hyperbaric industry continues to grow, that is something that we start to get answers for over the next few years. I appreciate your time and attention, and make sure you stay tuned for next week, where we're going to go over the biological aging and epigenetic findings from this same research. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, because you're not going to want to miss that video. See you next week.